Hi, I'm Rebecca, and in today's lesson, I'll explain 12 common errors that students make in academic English. Now, what's academic English? It's the English that you need to use in school, college, or university when you're reading, writing, listening, um, and speaking, okay? Ideally, but most importantly, when you're writing. Now, what's the difference between academic English and general English? Well, academic English in general, there, there are many differences, but in general, academic English is more formal, it's more objective, and also it has to use a lot of referencing. You always have to um, let them, let people know where you got your information from. You have to cite the source, you have to give the source. You can't claim to write something and uh, claim it as your own, okay? If you do that, that's called plagiarism. It's a very serious offense in academic circles. But today, we're not going to talk about how to reference a source. We're going to talk about the two other aspects, how to write more formally and objectively. And what are the 10 common errors that students make when they are not formal enough? Okay, sorry, not 10, 12. Okay, here we go. So, first of all, using contractions. All of these are what you should not do, okay? So, avoid using contractions. Or, sorry, in this case, don't use contractions at all. So, don't say don't, say do not. Don't say isn't, say is not, all right? That's academic English. Next, avoid phrasal verbs. So, for example, instead of saying go up, prices went up, say prices increased. Instead of saying take away, say remove. Avoid these multi-part verbs, all right? It's not as formal. Next, avoid idioms. Instead of saying it was A1, say it was excellent. All right? Um, avoid slang. Don't say kids, say children. Use the proper terminology for various um, subjects. Avoid pronouns. So, for example, instead of saying, you can see from the graph, all right? We use the pronoun you. Instead of that, say, the graph shows, right? Next. Avoid negatives. For example, instead of saying something is not effective, just say it is ineffective. Instead of saying something is not positive, say it's negative. So avoid these kind of negatives. Next, avoid cliches. Now what are cliches? Cliches are a kind of idiom, basically, commonly used expressions. All right, and uh, so on, kind of a common wisdom about different things. And so you want to avoid these kind of expressions. For example, instead of saying, when all is said and done, all right, we use that in conversation, but you don't want to use it in your academic writing. Instead of saying that, you'd probably use an expression like, in conclusion. All right, so um, next. There's certain kinds of punctuation um, there's actually lots of rules about punctuation. And the kind of punctuation, the style of punctuation that you use in academic writing depends on the style guide that you have been asked to follow in your school, college, or university. Uh, some very uh, well-known style guides are the MLA or APA. These are certain style guides. And they tell you everything about how you need to write, what rules you need to follow, what are the rules of punctuation, of quotation marks, of this and that, okay? A lot more than what I'm covering here. But in general, I can just tell you that we don't see that many exclamation marks in academic writing, okay? We do see a lot of semicolons, all right? That's kind of, uh, when do we use a semicolon? Do you remember? Okay, what's the difference between a period and a semicolon? A period clearly divides two sentences, and a semicolon has one sentence, which is a complete sentence, then you put the semicolon, you do not capitalize the next letter, and the next part sentence is connected, and you want to show that it's connected to the first sentence, which is a very academic, intellectual, philosophical 
thing to do. So learn to use semicolons if you're in university, especially. Next, avoid vague language. Don't say a bit, a lot, kind of, sort of. The days for using that kind of language is over once you've, uh, the days are over once you've reached university, right? So instead of that, say a considerable number, a considerable amount. Okay. That's why sometimes they say that you can tell when someone has been to university because they use higher level language, which doesn't mean that you cannot use higher level language if you have not been to university. You can still learn to use excellent language. Next. Simple vocabulary. Don't use simple vocabulary. You want to use slightly more sophisticated vocabulary. Instead of saying a big difference, say a major distinction. Okay? Now, this is academic. Next, avoid giving your personal opinion. Okay? In academic circles, they are not so keen on knowing your opinion. Don't say, I think, I believe, in my view. Instead of that, say, according to so-and-so, according to this research study, and you mentioned this particular research study, you have to always give credit to the source. Where did you get your information? Who wrote that book? What happened? Okay, you have just various styles and ways in which you can mention that information, but you must always give credit to the source and don't really give your opinion, unless it's specifically asked for in a particular assignment. Okay. And last, don't use language which is too direct or too strong, because then maybe it cannot be justified. So you can't make very broad claims about anything. You have to be able to justify anything that you write, especially. Okay. So in other words, in academic English, your goal is to Speak like your professor and write like your textbook. And if you can do that, then you're probably going to do very well in the academic world and also out there in your career. Okay? If you'd like to do a quiz on this, please go to our website, www.ingvid.com. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your English.